welcome to the next lecture in magnetic circuit we were discussing the magnetic circuit and magnetism so here we are going to discuss the ampere turn calculations and the series and parallel magnetic circuit so in magnetic circuit we have seen that the flux is basically the mmf by reluctance where mmf is given by the product of number of turns into current and the reluctance is given by the property of the material that is the length divided by the multiplication of the area of cross section and the permeability of free space and the relative permeability so since we are discussing how to determine the ampere turn so the required ampere turn we can obtain by taking the rhs side on one side so ni that is the ampere turn will be equal to the flux multiplied with the length divided by the denominator term which is the area multiplied with the permeability now we know that the flux per unit area will give you the flux density b so b divided by mu not mu r into l where b into l is basically h which is the magnetizing force or magnetic field intensity so the final conclusion is the mmf and i so we can write the mmf and i is equal to the magnetizing force h into the length of the conductor so in this way we can calculate the ampere turn now we will look what is a series magnetic circuit so we know the series electric circuit now let us see the series magnetic circuit so a series magnetic circuit without any air gap will follow the relationship ni that is the magnetizing mmf in is equal to flux into reluctance is equal to h into length so here we do not have any air gap so that it is without an air gap so there is a coil which is exciting this magnetic circuit and a flux is produced and l is the average length of the magnetic circuit now this magnetic circuit can be drawn in the electrical equivalent form where the mmf will be equal to n into i instead of current your flux will be deriving and you will be having a reluctance which is equal to the sum product of h into l now in a series circuit same flux will flow through the two medium iron and air so in the particular first case we have taken only one material in the second case we have taken two magnetic material one is iron and the other is air here air is treated as one of the magnetic material although air is an insulator we are treating it is one magnetic material with some reluctance and so the reluctance of iron we denote it as ri whereas rg is the reluctance of the air gap since both iron and air gap are is in series we can connect the reluctances together in series and the same amount of flux will flow through the entire circuit so the flux so the so the mmf and i will give you the flux phi which flows through both the reluctances now the reluctance of iron will be equal to hi into li whereas the reluctance of the air gap will be hg into lg so the total reluctance as we do in the electric circuit we know that in a series circuit your r equivalent is equal to r1 plus r2 so the same concept we are going to use here the total reluctance will be equal to the reluctance of iron plus reluctance of air gap now since values of permeabilities are different for both iron and air we know that mu not is basically the permeability of air and mu i will be the permeability of iron the corresponding value of x that is the magnetizing force will be different so we can compute h i and h g separately by changing the value of the permeability so in case of air we will use mu not whereas in case of iron we are going to use the product of mu not into mu i where mu i is basically the relative permeability of the iron 
here we can see that magnetizing density remains the concept, uh, constant. So the flux can be determined as the MMF divided by the equivalent reluctance of the circuit which is equal to the sum of uh, the reluctance of iron plus reluctance of air gap and in the numerator we have n into i which is the product of the m product of the number of turns into the current so now we will see that if there is some parallel part parallel path in the magnetic circuit how to solve that so in the previous circuit we have a series magnetic circuit without uh, air gap and with air gap so here in this circuit we can see one of the magnetic circuit which is having both as the series path as well as the sunt path or the parallel path. We know that in concept of electric circuit, so in concept of electric circuit we know if the total current is IT then the KCL law, Kirchhoff's current law will op, uh, apply in one of the node and here you will be having the current division I1 and I2. So instead of current, we will have a flux. So if phi is the total flux, which is exciting due to the total current I, then this flux will divide in the particular node where it is dividing. So here it will be phi 1 and here it will be phi 2. Now this phi 2 in this part of the magnetic circuit and this part of the magnetic circuit will be equal because these two are in series. So the same flux will flow here and then here is the meeting point at section T where phi 1 and phi 2 match each other and the total flux phi is again originating. So we can say that the total flux phi T is equal to phi 1 plus phi 2. Now we will draw the electrical equivalent circuit of the particular magnetic circuit. So the net magnetizing force and I will give you the a total flux as phi and this flux will be divided into two paths one as phi 1 another as phi 2 so the total flux is in this part of the circuit which is given by r t u p g so here we can see that in this rectangle path you can see that you will be having the total flux now we have two different parallel path parallel path 1 and parallel path 2 in parallel path 1 you have two iron path and one air gap so this is your air gap and you have a two iron path and here you have the second path where there is no air gap so only iron path is there then we can draw this circuit into and we can write the equations for the series parallel concept so r being the reluctance of the a uh, reluctance of the path where the total flux is flowing r1 is the reluctance of the path number one in the iron r2 is the reluctance of the path of the iron in path two rg is the reluctance of the air gap so the total flux phi which is originating now will be divided into two paths phi 1 and phi 2 and phi 1 path will be the sum of two components one with iron and other with air gap whereas phi 2 will have only one component. Now we can write phi 1 is equal to phi 2 in accordance with Kirchhoff's current law though here current is converted to flux then the flux total flux can be written as n into i whereas phi 1 can be written as hl and phi 2 can be written as the sum of hg into lg so this is equal to phi 1 and this is equal to phi 2 so the total uh, it, it can be written in term of the reluctance as reluctance total reluctance into flux plus r1 plus rg into phi 1 this we can write it now if we took, take, uh, take in the numerator side and denominator side so it is r1 plus rg that is rn plus air gap into phi1 equal to r2 plus phi2 so if you divide this one h1 l1 plus hg lg is equal to h2 l2 then we can write ni is equal to hl plus h2 l2 so in this way wherever you will have any series circuit or parallel circuit you can divide the flux and you can obtain the equivalent electrical circuit 
analogous to the magnetic circuit and solve your problem. So this completes the series on parallel magnetic circuit. See you in the next lecture. Thank you.